Hold Michelle. Hello, my name is Daniel Fink, and I'm here at Poem Shelf. It's a TV production at JDHS, and I'm here speaking with Bill Chalmers, and he's an English teacher, and we're going to be, going to be discussing poetry today. So, Bill, how long have you been teaching at JDHS? Well, I've just started my sixth year of teaching at JDHS. Uh, one year, a long time ago, back in the mid-80s, and then the last five years in a row. In your part, in your point of view, what is poetry? Without getting too deeply into it, uh, to me, poetry is probably different than what most people conceive poetry to be. I like to make a distinction between poetry and verse. Poetry, to me, is the use of language in such a way that it evokes an emotional feeling response from the audience. For that reason, uh, I find poetry in many, many forms. I find poetry in verse. I find poetry in novels, short stories. I find poetry in television shows, and Broadway plays. Uh, I find poetry in athletic contests, car races. Uh, anything that evokes emotion. Uh, I sometimes like to look at, at uh, the use of, the, of language, uh, like a, a freight train. Uh, prose, that work uh, of the world type language that we use, is a, is a freight train that carries many, many different kinds of products. And, and the cars are sort of randomly thrown together. We have our oil tankers and flat cars and box cars and cabooses. And, Many times they're randomly thrown together without any seeming uh, pattern. For me, poetry would be the reconfiguration of those railroad cars into a way, into a manner that, that looks good to the eye. So that in poetry, it would be putting the words together in such a way that they sound good when they roll together, in such a way that they, they evoke uh, a good, pleasant feeling, or perhaps a not so pleasant, but a, at least an authentic feeling in the, in, the, in the hearer, in the listener. Because uh, above all things, poetry needs to be heard. It is, it's like verbal music, if you will, <coughs> that needs to be listened to, as well as just written and read. Um, and for that reason, I find it difficult to understand why anyone would not love poetry, because uh, it seems almost contradictory to me to say, I hate that which I love. Uh, what I love about life is the poetry in life. And to say that I hate poetry is to say a contradiction. Have you ever published any of your own poems? Um, <laughs> I have a book right here, which is not for sale, and I'm, trying, I'm not trying to sell it. Actually, uh, my brothers and sisters have all the other copies of this book. My mom and dad have a copy. I put it together in the school shop in Akiak when I was teaching there. The book is called uh, Alaska and Other Newfound Frontiers, and it is my poetry. So yes, I have published uh, all of these. They have been made public to at least a dozen people. Um, I did have one poem that was published on the front cover of an educational uh, flyer that was uh, spread throughout Minnesota a few years ago. Uh, and it's about education, so I, I thought I'd, I'd read that for you today. It's called Wasted Seeds. A child I saw the other day from wisdom's light had turned away. And when I came to ask him why a mind so bright from truth would shy, he spoke back with a voice that boredom showed. They teach those things I have no need to know. And those ideas that I'd like to love, no one will take the time to share or show. And so he darkly spent his learning days in dullness shadowed from truth's warming rays. 
had we but taken time to feel his needs, what gardens might have blossomed from those seeds? That one is published somewhere on a pamphlet in somebody's file cabinet in Minnesota. Um, I sent in a s several poems to a, a publisher and they sent me back a very nice rejection. And I don't handle rejection very well, so I haven't done it again. Thank you. If you were inspired to write poetry, did you did it come naturally? How did it, how did you do how did you come up with it? Did you do a lot of reading or was just something that you liked to do a lot as a child? I never wrote any poetry until I was over thirty years old. Um, I can remember the first poem that I ever wrote. Uh, it's in this book, and it's called October Trees. And I wrote it because I was required to write it by another English teacher in our department who needed a poem from a teacher for a literary magazine. Uh, I remember the second and third poems that I wrote, too, because it was for the same teacher for the same magazine. I needed to write two short ones, and she gave me five minutes each to write them. And then I didn't write again until I came to Alaska. And that's why my first book of poetry is called Alaska and Other Newfound Frontiers. There's something about Alaska that inspires poetry. And living out on the Kuskokwim River among a people who uh, have poetry running through their very souls, it was very easy for me to write much poetry. I wrote every day when I lived in Akiak. Um, and I write every day now with my students. Uh, experimenting with different forms, um, trying to get away from rhymed verse and trying to get uh, into more free verse, uh, more of what you might call prose with poetry tucked into every line. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Uh, talking about poetry is always a pleasure for me.